Hello, I'm a vocal object four, and welcome back to Wounded by Words. Okay, awesome. Six biscuits and some water. I'd advise you to cut them in half so we can have another meal later. We don't have much to eat, so let's impose rationing. And so went our humble meal. Each one of us got half a biscuit and a portion of water. Not enough to soothe my appetite, sadly. Well, since the rescue team still isn't here, I guess we'll be sleeping in this charming place. Too bad we don't have some kind of blanket. <laughs> ah, sleeping directly on the floor is not suited for my age. If only I had known, I would have taken my coat. <laughs> would someone be kind enough to help me with the... When the moment comes, I don't want to sleep in my wheelchair. It's not comfy. It's not comfy enough for that. No problem. Sleeping on the floor here? It's disgraceful. I don't want to. Well, then you can sleep in the rubble. <laughs> None of us like the idea either, you know. Dave is such a crybaby. If you want, I can sing you a lullaby. No thanks. It wasn't time to sleep yet, so we had some free time to spend. We were joking about the fact that the rescue team would probably wake us up in the middle of the night. <laughs> Deep down, I was sure everyone wished that would be the case. Soon enough, conversations died down. I couldn't stay on my own doing nothing. I had to speak to someone to help me forget. Uh, pass some time with, let's see, there's Dave, there's Lisa, and Hanson. I actually like Aline and Gabriel, so I'll, I'll talk to them. I decided to chat a bit with Aline and Gabriel. Aline was so bubbly, and it was always pleasant to see her. Gabriel was a bit of a cynic, but I always liked his snarky comments. Agreed. When I found them on the other side of the corridor, they were in the middle of a heated debate. It sure is lively here. What are you two talking about? Well, it turns out this young lad and I both have the same hobby. Really? What is it? Video games. We're playing the same MMORPG. Huh. Oh, nice. I'm not fond of those, but I can see the appeal. When you're an old lady like me, you have to pass the time, and MMORPGs are the most time-consuming activity I've ever seen. Once you've started, it's hard to stop. <laughs> I don't want to count how many hours I played. Hundreds of hours for me, at least. I like to do the high-level content. You must be in a guild, then. Yes, a small one. I tried dozens of guilds, and always ended up being disgusted. As soon as I used my might, some player would hurry to laugh and might... Some player would hurry to laugh and mock me. Yeah, that sucks. I've heard that it's a current issue in online games. I can't stand that. Their guilds were full of... Garbage, anyways. I don't regret leaving them to their prejudices. My current one is so much better. It's friendly and everyone helps each other. Coolio! I wish I could find a nice guild too. I play solo because being with other people is a nightmare. Well, you can't really play solo in an MMO, can you? True, you should have chosen another genre. <laughs> Say, Adeline, you wouldn't recruit me by any chance. I want to do the high-level content too, but it's too difficult to do with temporary teams. My my, how demanding. Well, I'll see what the one in charge thinks. Maybe you'll agree. Let's share contacts. Yeah, you're awesome. In the end, this situation does have a silver lining. He still had to get out. <laughs> oh, but that's a minor detail. 
After a lively conversation, we decided it was time to rest. After a while, ev whoa, everyone went their own separate ways to find the least comfortable corners, least uncomfortable corners of the room, and laid down on the ground. Get golly! I glanced at them regularly and saw many people turning around every which way in hope of finding some sleep. I wasn't very optimistic. I could probably sleep on the floor. I'd feel horrible in the morning, but I could do it. I knew that as soon as I closed my eyes, the screens would return. The sparks. I didn't want to see them again. I knew what would await. Another sleepless night. Another in a long series. At least I won't stand out of the crowd tomorrow morning. Nobody would know. Almost despite myself, I felt weariness filling me from the inside. I, bumped sl I blinked slower and slower. On the other side, there was darkness and fire. I saw the sand again, those dunes. I felt the blazing sun, the heavy air, the smell of petrification. My mind was uncontrollably attracted to this place. I tried to resist, but it was useless. I had been cursed, cursed with memory. I was in the middle of the desert, lost, powerless, as the scene passed before my eyes once again. No! I awoke from my dream with a start. It was the middle of the night, yet the scenery hadn't changed one bit. It was almost reassuring. Everyone else seemed to be sleeping. I envied their peaceful dreams. I wish I could be one of them. Slowly, carefully, I stood up and went to the bathrooms. I had to relieve myself. This place is really de depressing. I feel almost at home. Eh, <sighs> that's depressing. As I rose from the toilet, I suddenly felt another presence, even though I hadn't heard anyone after me. Then there was a strange sound. I approached the door handle suspiciously to see what the commotion was, but I couldn't get out of the stall. I was locked in, alone in a narrow place. I felt my heart beating faster and faster. I hated this feeling. It was the same as back then, the same despair in the face of death. Please, no, not that. Let me out. I don't want to be here. I was like a rat caught in a trap. Let me out. For the love of goodness sakes, I hate narrow places. I hammered on the door as forcefully as I could. It was no use. I had to find a way out quickly. My hands were shaking. If I didn't get out soon, I'd have a panic attack and everyone would notice. And usually stalls are, are up high enough that you can slide underneath. At least usually. Either that or you could usually just climb over the stall. I couldn't let them see me in this pitiful state. I had to find a way. Okay, let's see. Tried hammering on the door again. Tried kicking the lower part of the door, but it didn't budge. Tried turning the handle, but it won't move. I tried kicking the lock with all my strength. The door went flying off the hinges with a loud bang, wide open at last. I rushed towards the mirror. I took some time to breathe, gripping the sides of the washstand. I couldn't quite comprehend what had happened, why I had seemingly trapped myself. Nothing felt real. Am I imagining things again? I was scared, scared of myself, scared the others would see me, scared of going back to that place. I don't want to be buried under the corpses of my companions again, to see their distorted faces, to hear them cursing me again. I knew I overreacted, I knew I shouldn't have, but deep down, I couldn't prevent the insidious fear from eating me alive. I didn't want to relieve... Relive this moment again, but the sensation of being trapped was ever-present in this place. 
Everything here could trigger a panicked attack. There are places, the sensation of being trapped, unable to move, the heavy air, the ruins. I had been on edge for several hours and tried my best not to show it, to forget it. But now that I was alone, everything was coming back to me again. It had to stop. Oh, right. I had almost forgotten. The doctor I saw earlier today had been checking how my new treatment was going. I wasn't used to it yet. He he prescribed to me an antidepressant. I had to take it every day, starting with 50 grams, and then report to him if the dose was enough. It had been several days now since the beginning of my medical treatment. My memory was a mess. Had I even taken my daily dose yesterday? I searched through my pocket, pulled out my pack of pills, and gulped one without thinking before going back to my imaginary bed. And sure enough, I had a terrible night. The floor was cold and hard, so we practically broke our bats. The next morning, all our bodies were were sore. But even if I was at home, I still wouldn't have felt safe. Sure, the mattress would have been more comfortable, but that would be it. Because I dreamt of that place again. I heard the rifles, the explosions, and immediately I woke up. Soon after, weariness invaded my mind, and I fell asleep. Returning there again, waking up again. It was always the same. After several cycles, I didn't know if I was awake or just dreaming that I was awake. Everything felt the same, like a never-ending parade. Memories lined up, marching in my head one after the other. My sobs, my fear, my uneasiness, I couldn't escape them. That was why I didn't realize what happened later. A strange sound woke me up. When I opened my eyes, I noticed I was lying on the ground, and the light at the end of the hallway dazzled me. There was a persistent buzzing sound coming from my pocket, most likely my cell phone. I remember that my cell phone couldn't be ringing, as I had run out of battery a while ago. How could I be receiving a phone call now? What? I stared at the screen dumbfounded. The name that appeared was that of someone I knew, but it, that couldn't be right. Couldn't be him. How was that possible? He was a close friend that I liked very much and he died months ago when he put his foot on a landmine. The person who was calling me was dead. It can't be him. Surely someone had borrowed his cell phone somehow. It had to be a mistake. I decided to pick up the phone nonetheless and brought it to my ears anxious. Shh. You can't. Can't escape. Shh. And there were only haunting, unearthly noises left on the other end of the phone. Unusual sounds, like someone had really called me from hell. Scared, I cringed and dropped the cell phone, which crashed on the floor. I couldn't help but let out a small cry. I heard someone grumble behind me. I must have woken one of the other trapped people. Hey, Dave. Sorry, I had a nightmare. Dave turned around and walked away. I saw some of the others stretching out. They couldn't get back to sleep because of me. Oopsie daisies. <sighs> Plus, it was obvious that our hope of being rescued during the night was shattered. What's the rescue team doing? They should have been here long ago. Who knows? Maybe we're not that important to them. Or maybe something else happened on the surface while we're down here. Another disaster somewhere that's keeping them busy. I would love to be able to drink coffee right now. Too bad there's no dispenser near the bathroom. I'm sure it wouldn't have been working anyway. 
How unlucky for us. I'm sure some were even less lucky than us and were crushed by collapsing walls during the incident. Well, let's talk about something else. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I too had to forget. Now is the perfect time to chat with someone and erase my latest sleepless night. I really want to talk with like Elwine or Gabriel or, or whatnot, but I feel like I should extend my hand out a little bit more. Um, yeah, let's talk to Dave. I went to Dave, hoping he would help me pass the time. I guess we're all missing our homes, right? <laughs> of course. My wife must be worried as heck. I can't stand being unable to call her. All my friends must have noticed my absence too. I have to get out to reassure them. At least you're guaranteed to find people happy to see you alive at home. It's a good thing. Oh, but I'm sure you all have people waiting for you on the other side, right? I don't want to sound presumptuous, but I'm pretty sure you're the only one here who fe feel welcome out there. How so? Well, looking at their faces right now, I can tell they're like me. They know nobody is waiting for them to return. I guess I am you... I envy you a little for that. But it's normal to have a family, right? Why am I special here? Not everyone has a family. Or maybe that fi family just isn't tolerant. Things happen. It's life. Say, I know it might be rude, but... Have you ever struggled in your life? You look like the type who doesn't need to try very hard. Of course I have, like everyone else. Life only rewards the most deserving people, after all. Ah. Oh, that's what I thought. <laughs> what is it? You've never... Eh! Ah, oh, golly, that's horrible. Uh, you never had to face social determinism, right? I bet your father was middle class and you had access to a long and expensive education. Well, my father was a bookkeeper, and I went to an engineering school. But I succeeded because I worked hard. That's pretty talk, but in reality, you held all the cards to success from birth. You came from a privileged background. You had the luxury to choose what you wanted to do in life. But what was I supposed to do? Deny my education? It's not my fault that I was born in a loving family. No, of course, it's not anyone's fault, but that explains a lot about your way of thinking, you know? Since you don't know what insecurity really is, you're very, uh, detached. I work for the common good. I want to help people too, you know? Yes, it's admirable, but you don't know what it's like to be unwanted. I think you should ask the others for their experience. I'm sure you'll learn a lot. Why are you always lecturing me like that? Well, you don't seem like a bad dude, so I want to understand your point of view better. As weird as it might sound, I want to help you. Help me do what? Help you become a better person? As a human being, you have an unlimited growth if you want to. You can learn all your life. So don't you think you've learned all... So don't think you've learned all there is to learn. Keep growing, that's all. Dots. Dave shrugged with a confused look on his face. I knew he didn't understand the point I was trying to make. But it was alright. Maybe he would someday. After this calm conversation, we, timed, we decided it was time to join the others. Okay, <laughs> well, talking with Dave, huh, after spending some time chatting, we gathered again. The atmosphere was gloomy, to say the least. I'm hungry. 
I'm tired. How long will we have to stay here? You should all follow Hanson's example. He's the only one who hasn't complained so far. We won't achieve anything just by grumbling. I guess you're finally in shape. You weren't that energetic this morning. Hey, I'm not perfect. And I did say Hanson was the only one not complaining. I included myself in your punch. Let's take our last meal then. It may help a little bit. <laughs> like yesterday, each of us got half a biscuit and a portion of water. And there went our last rations. Since Hanson had a separate battle, he still had some left, but it was obvious that it wouldn't last long either. I'm still hungry. <laughs> of course you are. It's only half a biscuit. <laughs> I know it's not the most comfortable situation, but if we don't expend that much effort, it should be okay. I can't wait for the rescue team to come. I've got so much work to do at home. How can you think of work first? Well, I had to work overtime these last days to finish on time. I can't let all that go to waste. I can handle hunger and fatigue, but the boredom will kill me first. I know, I have a deck of cards in my pocket. Let's play together. Cool, good idea. And so we sat down in a circle to play cards. I wasn't exactly fond of card games, but I went along with them in order to occupy my mind. By the way, this music is pretty nice. I, I enjoy it. Alwine declared that Hansen would be the referee, which made him roar with laughter. Don't get fooled, folks. You have a pro in front of you. I'm unbeatable. We'll see about that. I must say I'm quite skilled myself. I'm pretty sure I can beat you. Yeah, right. Dream on, Sonny. It's been a while since I last played cards. I hope I'll be okay. Don't worry, the most important thing right now is to have fun, right, Hanson? Dots. See, he thinks so too. Let's wait for the rescue team while doing something for a change. And so we played together for hours while laughing. It really was a convival, con convival moment. It made me think of my former comrades. When we had to go to war, there was always a period of calm. Either the higher-ups were thinking of a plan, or the enemies hadn't made a move yet because they didn't know how we'd react. But there were always times like these, when we were playing cards together, trying to forget the situation and have a good time. It wasn't much, yet this moment made me feel a little happy inside. More memories were coming back. Not the screams, but the laughter. It had been so long since I'd felt that way, it was almost refreshing. Time flew by, and as she predicted, Alwine defeated us hands down. She really was something. Losing interest, we finally split up and went about our own business. Alwine was trying to take a nap in the corner, while Alicia, Gabriel, and Dave chatted, chatted at another. As for me, I decided to play with Hanson. So you're using your small car again. Can I make Vroom Vroom too? I guess that is a no. Hmm. I'm not doing the right thing, am I? Show me what you want me to do. Hmm. I was trying to understand what Hanson was doing when I heard an exclamation. I turned around. Alicia seemed upset. What's wrong? It's gone. Gone. What's gone? You lost something? Hanson's bowl of juice had disappeared. I put it in my purse. There's no way I dropped it, so I must have taken it. Alicia stood up with a furious look on her face and shouted, Who took Hanson's bottle? Tell me. It's not funny. You all had your portions already. 
Taking the ration of a kid, really? Have you no shame? Who did it? I want an answer. Everyone stared at each other with confusion. Maybe it's a misunderstanding and the bottle slipped somewhere. I'll help you find it. Me too. I'm sure it's somewhere. Gabriel and I decided to look for Hanson's missing bottle. Maybe he dropped it in here. All of us have gone to the bathroom at some point. Maybe. Ah, look, Gabriel. Below the washstand. Ah, you're right. Here it is. Put up the ball and immediately realized it was empty. It pained me to say it so, but Alicia's fear may have been justified. Someone had junk, drunk Hanson's last portion of juice. Ah, shoot. I'm sorry, Alicia. We did find the bottle in the bathroom, but... It's empty. I knew it! Someone must have been thirsty. Who drank it? Calm down, maybe Hanson drank it and didn't tell you. He wouldn't do that. I agree. I agree with that. Hanson is always asking Alicia when he needs something. But why? Actually, I don't hear him complaining. Why can't he say that he's... Why can't he say that something is wrong himself, huh? Alicia went red as a tomato and exploded. You could see tears in her eyes. Because he's a child with autism, you jerk. Are you happy now? Happy? Just leave us alone. Dave suddenly gasped, embarrassed. He clearly didn't expect this and did his best to maintain his composure. I, I didn't know. It's not my fault. Oh yeah, it's not your fault? That's too easy. You don't have to know he's disabled to treat him properly, do you? Since the beginning, you've been picking on him. It's not his fault if he can't make himself understood that easily. I bet you're the one who took his bottle, aren't you? You thought it was funny to steal something from a defenseless child, is that it? It wasn't me, I swear. Why would I do that? And why are you blaming me? Gabriel did say at some point that he was thirsty. It could have been him, too. Are you saying I'm the culprit? That, that I drank from Hansen's bottle? No, I just said it could have been you. Wait, why are you all so defensive all of a sudden? Are you the thief that you're all? What? How could I have done that? You went to the bathroom earlier. You could have stolen it then without us knowing, noticing. Ah! Golly, my throat's a little bit dry. Oh, yeah. With my wheelchair making that noise, you think you wouldn't have heard me pass by Alicia's purse? Not like I'd look very suspicious trying to bend down. You didn't think that through, did you? Well, then, it could have been Agatha, Outline, or even Alicia herself. I'm taking Alicia out of this, and I'm... I'm hoping that my character didn't do it. <laughs> I don't think my character did. Yeah, maybe you were thirsty too and took your son's person. You're the only one that could have touched your own purse without looking suspicious after all. Then why would I have yelled, huh? I could have stayed quiet and nobody would have known. Well... Dave, you're, you're not the brightest bulb here. <laughs> See, don't try to find excuse. I know it's you, but I swear I didn't do anything. The tension was palpable. I didn't know what to say if anything. I felt powerless. Above all, I felt sad for Alicia and Hanson. Alicia was clearly infuriated. Dave had also gone too far by mocking the child all the time, but he cringed at his mistake. He didn't look like... He didn't like looking like the villain. Adeline was quiet. I could see she was very sad, whereas Gabriel looked angry, as if almost on the verge of taking it out on someone. Hanson had rushed to the corner of the room after the dispute and wouldn't move an inch from there. I could see him keeping his hands on his head, swinging his legs rhythmically. I guess it was his unique way of calming himself. 
I felt I understood his functioning a bit better now that I knew the right turn. Hours passed by with nobody daring to let slip a word. I couldn't bear a silence. Eh, I couldn't bear a silence this heavy. I had to do something, else I became more agitated. Alicia had given Hanson something to see them, and she seemed a bit more composed than her own. Maybe it was the right time to chat with someone and try to ease the tension. But Hanson's busy trying to chill out. Uh, who do I talk with? Ugh. Um. I really hope this game doesn't have multiple endings. Um. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna talk to. Kind of want to talk to Alicia. I also want to talk to Gabriel too. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. You know what? I'll talk to Alicia because I haven't talked to her. Talk to everyone except for Alicia and Hanson. And so, so let's do Alicia. I went to Alicia. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Sorry for shouting earlier. It's okay. You had your reasons. I hope it doesn't get to you. This? Oh no! Don't worry. I'm used to it all the time. I'd be more surprised if Dave had treated Hansen properly from the get-go. You know how people are. Okay. Actually, I'm thinking. About what? Everything and nothing at the same time. In my daily life, I have to turn my brain off to be sure I don't feel anything. To be sure I'll be efficient and soulless. And now that we're stuck here, my brain turned on by itself, and I can't help but reflect on the world, life, philosophical stuff. And I remember I'll have to get out someday. We can't stay here forever, after all. And I feel sad about it. Interesting. You don't want to go home? There's nothing waiting for me there. And what will I do? Go back to work again? Try to repay my debt? I'm fed up with working all the time. I turned my brain off to forget I was unhappy and frustrated. Now it's coming back, and I won't be able to return to who I was before. I don't want to go home. I'm hungry, tired, angry. I also feel less stressed. I can take my time for once. I can think whatever I want. Ahem. <clears throat> I can remember how it was during my studies instead of convincing myself it was for the best. <clears throat> Give me a second to get something to drink. <clears throat> oh, golly. This game is a lot of fun. And after talking with Alicia, we're going to be done. <sighs> ah, that's much better. Okay, I almost wish I could die here. Well, I would die here. Don't say something like that. But it's true. What future will I leave to Hanson? He has no future. Not in this society. It's a jungle. You're the hunter or the hunted. You think he's a hunter? No, he's not. So, people will wipe the floor with him, even though he's certainly a better person than some. It's unfair. I want him to be happy, yet I feel it'd be better for him if he just died. He wouldn't have to suffer, he wouldn't have to be discriminated against or anything. 
It's messed up, right? I understand why you're thinking this, right? But it isn't right. Yeah, God, we, let me drink some more. Yeah, I know. I have to fight for him, to fight to get him a better life. I'm tired of fighting. Sometimes I wish I could rest. I wouldn't have to worry about these things. Being underprivileged is exhausting. You have to work even harder to just get on the same level as the others. And yet, it's never enough. You're not allowed a single moment of weakness. You can't rest on your laurels. Ordinary people can't understand how it feels. The things we're fighting for are so baffling to them because they already have them, and they don't realize how much of a luxury it is. All I want is some rest. I wish, I wish I could rest too. After this conversation, we decided it was time to go to sleep. I couldn't help but feel that I'd learned a lot about my new companions. I was somehow getting closer to them. I was becoming useful again. It was a pleasant sensation, but a very fleeting one. As soon as it was, <clears throat> as soon as it was time to rest, I was left alone, and everything crumbled. No matter how hard I tried to forget during the day, the night was never as merciful. I couldn't go to sleep to see those nagging nightmares again. War had left a deep injury on my heart. And nothing can ever stay as it was before that. That night, I remembered what I had done. My unit had been sent to another country to bring civilization, they said. Their political leader was a dictator, they said. He had powerful weapons, they said. We weren't supposed to free the civilians from the evil man. To help them. He had... A I had enlisted the army for one reason, to save... I had enlisted the army for one reason, to save people. I didn't save those people. I murdered them. There were no powerful weapons. We bombarded their cities, killing innocents, injuring children and elders alike. It wasn't to help them. It was so we could terrorize them. And we succeeded. They wouldn't dare approach us at first. Instead, they ran away each time they saw us. I didn't understand. I thought I was helping them, that they had nothing to fear. Then they began to rebel. They cursed us, they spat on us, and I finally understood. I understood that we were destroying their homes, killing their beloved, burying all their... Bearing all they ever loved, and I became disgusted at myself, disgusted at my superior, whom I had trusted. How would I ever be forgiven? Did I even deserve to leave a normal life? The dead must be mad at me. I was sure they didn't want me happy. And they were right. I didn't deserve to live as a normal human being after what I had done. This... My mind knew all too well. My mind made me relive this nightmare for all eternity. It was my punishment, my atonement for my sin. Yet I couldn't live like this. The burden was too heavy to carry. I had to forget in any way possible. I woke up in the middle of the night, unable to go back to sleep. Oh golly, I'm hitting up in 40 minutes. I need to call it quits. Okay. Golly. Huh. That that sucks. Hmm. That really sucks. Hmm. Man. I I hope this this game ends up. I hope I'm on the path. To a happy ending, because so, so far I'm really enjoying the characters, and yeah, my main character does not have the 
Happy is past. Well, let's save. Oh, I'll make a second slot. Double save it. Just be safe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.